Good evening. Tonight I have some creepy true forest stories for you all, with a special guest narration from Slumber Reads. So please do watch to the end, and his links will be in the description. Thank you. Number one. My dad and I would occasionally go hunting together when I was a kid. I was 14, my dad knew a guy who owned what seemed to be half of Georgia. I mean, the amount of property this guy owned was ridiculous. He just let people hunt out there, and if he trusted you, he'd let you camp out there for a couple of nights. That's if you wanted. He'd always make sure we had a way to call for help though, before we did it. I loved camping, especially out there, more than I did just going hunting for a few hours then coming home. I like the woodsman feel of living out in the woods. We woke up early one morning and hiked into the woods. It was still dark when we got to our stand. We didn't see or hear anything, not even birds. I remember my dad commenting on it, and looking back, it should have been a sign. Frustrated, we pack up and look for a spot to camp, and we would set up again later that evening. My dad suggested we go deeper and to better our chances of seeing something, so that's what we did. We hiked for a few hours, found a clearing, and set up a small camp and got settled and passed the time freaking ourselves out by talking about Bigfoot and other woodland creatures. We hike a ways away from camp, set up our blinds and wait. Again, nothing. We get back and our tent has been pulled up and laid flat. Not in a neat way, but just kind of lying there. We thought it was just the wind or something, and we didn't put it upright, and it had collapsed. We didn't think much of it. Since we didn't see or even hear anything all day, we decided to leave the following day and try again later that week. We settled in for the night and built a really small fire, and just relaxed. Again, not even birds are making a sound. I remember thinking how odd it was to be this deep into the woods and only hear one or two birds the whole trip. Oh well, maybe we are making too much noise and scared everything off. So we go to sleep soon after settling in. It's pitch black, middle of the night. I wake up for some reason. I wake up for some reason, just to try and go back to sleep. I'm in the half asleep, half awake phase when I hear laughter. I kind of jolt awake, but don't hear it anymore. So I figured it was a dream. I lay back down, and a few minutes later, I hear it again. It continues and gets pretty loud. I wake up again, but this time my dad is up too. And he whispers and asks, Did you hear that? And this is when my heart dropped. He heard the laughing too. It wasn't a dream. We heard it again, but it was faint. And now that I'm actually awake, I am paying attention to it. It sounded kind of like several people laughing in unison. It wasn't crackling or hysterical laughter, but just kind of a normal laughter. It didn't last, but for maybe five or six long motherfucking seconds. I have never felt that much fear before in my entire life. 
We didn't hear it anymore after that, but needless to say, we didn't get any sleep. We packed up as soon as the sun came up and got the fuck out of there. My dad was convinced someone followed us and was playing a prank. That's why we didn't see anything. He said, while we were in the stands and blind, they were scaring off all the wildlife with their unmasked consent and being on the ground. He says this, but he didn't go back out there for over a month. When he did finally go back, he mentioned it to the guy who owned the property. He wouldn't let my dad hunt there anymore. Didn't say why either. My dad thinks he made the guy think that my dad was crazy or something. Number 2 Another ranger and I were out on a search and rescue call once. The missing person was a man in his twenties. He had gone hiking and had not returned the day that he intended to. When we got the call, it was night time. But we hiked in a few miles and set up camp on a ridge that had a pretty good view. He had gone into the woods prepared, so we decided to wait until daylight before beginning the search. About 2am, I get up and I'm taking a piss when I see a moving light at the base of the cliffs across the valley and a few miles away. Looks like a flashlight beam. I tell the other ranger and we make the decision to keep waiting for daylight. The next morning, we decide to go check out the area and bring this guy home. We get to approximately where I saw the light the night before and start calling his name. Soon, we find his body at the base of the cliff. He had fallen 60 feet on his head. The body was badly mangled, so we radio back that this has now become a recovery instead of a rescue. At this point, the other ranger yells to me to come look at this. Lying 20 feet from the man's body was his mag light. It seemed odd, but I thought nothing of it until the other ranger reminded me of the light the night before. It kind of gave me the creeps, but I still dismissed it. Before too long, the coroner arrived and inspected the body. After he took the body back to the lab, he said that the man had been dead for at least 48 hours before we found the body. All of a sudden, the oh shit alarm went off in my brain. I knew that it couldn't be possible. I had the coroner review his work, same result. I tried to find an explanation for the light I'd seen, perhaps other hikers, but one search and rescue guy had stayed at the only trailhead in the area all night. No one had come or gone. To this day, I have no clue what I saw that night. It freaked me out though. This happened to myself and a close friend, both 23-year-old males, just last month. We decided to go on a two-night backpacking and camping trip in the Adirondack Mountains of New York. We are both very comfortable with nature and spend a lot of time camping, hunting, fishing, etc. We hiked about five miles into a small lake and set up camp on a small beach. This was not a heavily trafficked area, and we did not expect to run into anyone. Our first night there we were sitting around the fire. We saw a flashlight moving on the other side of the lake around 10.30. This was fairly unusual, however we did not think too much of it. But as time went on, the flashlight kept moving around the lake getting closer to our campsite. We kept discussing who could possibly be wandering around the woods in the middle of the night, and we didn't really want an unwelcomed guest. Once it became clear that the person, or people, 
We're heading for our campsite. We moved off into the woods to see who wandered up. I took a small axe with me, and my friend had a 22 rifle. Now we weren't expecting trouble, and we certainly didn't want to make any, but we figured we might as well cover our bases. Now the moment of truth. The flashlight comes near the light of our fire, and it is one man. He has a beard and is probably in his mid-forties. The scary part was he was carrying what turned out to be a pump-action shotgun. He walked around the campsite a few times, and then proceeded to enter our tent. After rummaging around for a minute or so, he came out and started yelling. I know you're out there. Why don't you come and say hello? My friend and I remained motionless under a hemlock tree about 50 yards away. This is when the man proceeded to fire his shotgun into the woods, not too far from where we were. He also swung his flashlight around several times. After what felt like hours, he grabbed my friend's backpack and a few articles of clothing we had drying off near the fire and threw them into burn. My friend, who had trained the 22 at the man, asked me if he should shoot. I told him absolutely not, unless he spots us and starts to point the gun in our direction. Thankfully, the man moved off from where he had come after a little while. We waited until his flashlight was on the other side of the lake, ran out, grabbed everything we could fit in my pack and took off. It was now around 2 or 3 a.m. We ran out the trail with flashlights and made it back to my car as the sun was coming up. We immediately went to the police department and reported it, where we also spoke with some forest rangers. That was it. I haven't heard anything back from the police. It wasn't mysterious, however it creeped the hell out of both of us. Thank you all for listening. I hope you all enjoyed 